Why spend hours overclocking when one click will get you free performance? Here's a quick tour of ROG's AI overclocking on the latest Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Here's the BIOS uh, on this X570 Hero motherboard. So uh, there are a number of di different ways that we can go about overclocking, but I want to start by showing the easiest way that even if you have never overclocked before, even if you have no idea what you're doing, this is free performance that basically everyone should should do. This is our RAM speeds. We set that to Expo 2. That's gonna get us the rated speed on our RAM. Remember that if you just plug in, you know, DDR5, 6,000 RAM uh, and you don't do anything, it's going to run at the the lowest JDEX speeds that, that this generation of RAM is rated for. So if you want the RAM, the speed that your RAM actually advertises, you want to set that Expo setting, and then you want to come down to core ratio and change it from auto to AI optimized. That That's is it. all we're doing. I'm That's done. It. Overclocked. Same changes, exit. We're now overclocked, okay? So, uh, I'm going to start by running a, a single, single threaded benchmark while I kind of explain this. But um, with modern Ryzen CPUs, you have traditionally you've had two options for overclocking it, right? You can uh, either, uh, I mean, so I, I guess it, the easiest way to describe this to show what we saw earlier. Um, when uh, we're running an all core load, like in Cinebench or something like that, um, you'll see it boost to, you know, 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz like we saw. And if you're running on a single thread, it'll boost much higher, mm -hmm. uh, which is handy in, in certain games that only use one or two threads and things like that. To, oh, when you overclock, you kind of have to uh, uh, pick pick your poison a little bit. You can do a traditional all-core overclock, and that will greatly benefit your multi-threaded performance. But when you do Sorry. that all-core overclock, you lose that extra single-threaded performance. Your single threads will only boost as high as your all-core overclock. So you'd actually be overclocking multi-threaded runs, but your single core score would actually go down mm -hmm. because it would only boost to like 5.3 gigahertz or whatever you you set it to do. You will see in in this test here that we're still boosting pretty high. Even though we have put on an AI overclock, we're still seeing those peaks of 5.7 gigahertz like we were before. That is because our AI overclock, well, I guess so the other option is to, you know, use the traditional boosting. You could use something like Precision Boost Overdrive to push that single threaded performance a little bit higher. Um, but again, you're choosing between the all-core overclock or the single threaded overclock with PBO. On our new AM5 motherboards, we have a feature called Dynamic OC Switcher. What it does is it can detect whether, I mean, you tell it kind of where you want the threshold to be in terms of amperage, but if you are running a really uh, high power multi-threaded load, you can tell it, use my manual overclock for that, for that multi-threaded load. I want high performance on that. And then when it's using a smaller single threaded load, you tell it, don't use my all core overclock, revert to the CPU's normal behavior and boost that one core really, really high. Okay. And if you're using PBO, that the PBO is kind of like just boosting that stock behavior it's expanding the limits the temperature and, and power limits of what it can do and, and so you can tell it to do that under single threaded loads so you are getting the best of both worlds this is huge uh because the last few generations there hasn't really been a great way to do that um and you kind of had to choose whether you wanted an all core overclock or you wanted to overclock single but you couldn't get both now you can get both and that's all built in to the ai overclocking so how does OC work with Ryzen 7000 since it already boosts itself as much as it can until it hits 95C? That's a great question. So um, 95C does seem, I know that seems hot. Um, these chips are rated to to work, to run even, even farther than that. Mm -hmm. um, so you could run it up to like 100 plus degrees if you wanted to. The other thing to kind of keep in mind is... Uh, a lot of time, these chips are set to run at a certain frequency um, at a certain voltage level. And they'll boost, and they'll boost the voltage with it um, until it hits its, its power or temperature limits. Now, your individual CPU, not like your model CPU, but the individual chip you hold in your hand uh, might have a chance at actually being able to boost higher with lower voltage, right? Um and, and this is something that, I mean, part of, this is why people undervolt, right? You can undervolt your CPU, get the same performance with lower temperatures. 
if you're overclocking, you can kind of do the same thing. You can keep the voltage the same and and maybe boost it manually yourself a little bit more than it's designed to boost. Uh, and you will see better performance at the same temperatures. Um, and the IO overclocking takes all this stuff into account. So um, I'm not seeing temperatures that are that much crazy higher. We can actually look at our temperatures after this finishes. Okay, so you'll see here, uh, I think my temperatures actually went down with AI overclocking because I was running at 95 before. So uh, what are you at now? That's hard for me. 92, to read. Uh, sorry, the max, the max is 93. Wow. 92 and a half. 93. Yeah, see, yeah, a little bit. So thermals. when, you know, when you're able to tinker with the voltage yourself, you are able to give yourself a little bit more temperature headroom to push the chip. So in this case, I just must have a really, really good chip. I won the silicon lottery, as they say, um, and I can really push the multipliers high without increasing the voltage that much. Hey guys, thanks for watching our quick tour of this feature. If you want the full rundown on overclocking Ryzen 7000, be sure to check out the full stream at the link in the description. And for even more of ROG's latest gear, hit the subscribe button and check out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash ASUSROG.